Now you be careful with that bear, Robert said. We haven't decided if we're going to buy it. When he looked at the price sticker, he was surprised how expensive it was. Yikes, he muttered. Buy? Tyler asked, still clutching the toy to his chest. Mine? Well, let me read the packaging and see if it's even safe for kids your age, Robert said. He pulled another bear off the shelf and turned it over. The pictures on the back of the box showed laughing toddlers playing with Tagalong Freddy, and interestingly, a woman dressed like she worked in an office, looking at her rich wristwatch and smiling like all was well in the world. Robert read the text on the back of the package. Tagalong Freddy is a kid's and parent's best pal. Freddy goes where your little one goes and sends you live updates on your Tagalong time rich wristwatch uh, so you'll know your little one is happy and safe. You may have to be out of sight sometimes, but Tagalong Freddy is the bear who is always there. Robert thought of all the times he had to tend to do something uh, in the kitchen or take an important phone call and leave Tyler unattended. It was amazing what could go wrong in, in just a few seconds. He recalled once when he left the living room long enough to stir a pot on the stove and returned to find Tyler scaling the bookcase like King Kong climbing the Empire State Building. He could see how this tagalong Freddy could come in handy, especially for a single parent like him. When you took into account that it was a toy that was also a safety device. The price didn't seem too outrageous. Tyler, he said, would you like to take Freddy home with you? Tyler's whole face lit up in a beautiful smile. Yeah, Daddy, thank you. Miss Lauren at daycare had told Robert they had been working on pleases and thank yous, but this was the thir first time he had ever heard Tyler say thank you without being prompted by a, what do we say? You're welcome, buddy, and I'm loving these good manners. Getting the bear and the witch wristwatch, I keep saying wrist, wrist wash, I don't know. Uh, getting the bear and the wristwatch set up and working was mildly annoying, but could have been worse. After about 15 minutes of fussing with directions and batteries, Robert had everything in working order. He handed the bear over to Tyler and said, why don't you play with Freddy while I get our, our supper started? Freddy, Tyler said, giving the bear a hug. In the kitchen, Robert put on a pot of water to boil and dumped the contents of a jar of spaghetti sauce into a pan. He was getting the lettuce, carrots, and cucumbers out of the fridge to start a salad when his tag-along Freddy time wrist watch vibrated. The screen said, a message from Freddy. Robert tapped the screen and a text appeared. It's all good, I'm playing with my best buddy. Cute. Robert couldn't help but smile. Robert sliced carrots and cucumbers for the salad and put the pasta on to boil. When he went in the living room to tell Tyler it was time to eat, the little boy was holding Freddy on his lap and reading to him from one of his little board books, my first book of colours. Every time Tyler did something this adorable, Robert wished Anna was here to see it. But who was he kidding? He always wished Anna was here. I Freddy's daddy, Tyler said. You are, huh? That's pretty cool, Robert said. Are you and Freddy ready for supper? Robert expected at least a small argument, since Tyler was in the middle of reading, but he said, Okay, Daddy, tucked his bear under his arm, and followed Robert to the kitchen. When he helped Tyler to his place at the table, Tyler set Freddy down in the chair next to him and said, Freddy plate? You want Freddy to have a plate too? Robert asked. Uh-huh, Tyler said, nodding like it was a very serious matter. Feeling more than a little silly, Robert set a plate and a cup on the sp at the spot on the table in front of the toy bear. He set down a plate of spaghetti and a bowl of salad in front of Tyler along with a sippy cup of milk. Now Freddy just has to pretend to eat food or he'll just get messy, Robert said. He'll eat pretend spaghetti and then, because he knew rhymes cracked Tyler up, he said, Freddy spaghetti. <laughs> Tyler giggled like his dad had just made the funniest joke in the world. Freddy spaghetti, he laughed then laughed some more, slapping the table in hilarity. He's ready for Freddy spaghetti, Robert said. He was milking the joke, but that's what you did when you had a two-year-old audience. There was not much occasion for subtle wit. Robert and Tyler ate spaghetti and salad and laughed a lot. Even Robert had to admit it was a fun time. See, this is a really adorable story so far, but the fact that in the background of this, there's cliffs and suicides... It, I think it means that this is going to be one of the darker stories yet because it starts out really cute and innocent and then it goes really dark. I feel like Scott could do that so well. Anyway, the downside to feeding a toddler spaghetti 
was that it made a bath necessary, pronto. Tyler's face was so smeared with orange goo that when he smiled he looked like a jack-o'-lantern. Somehow he had even managed to get noodles in his hair. Okay, buddy, Robert said, stealing himself in preparation for a tantrum. We're going to have to go straight to the bathtub after this. Freddy bath too? Tyler asked. Freddy can't get wet, but he can come along, Robert said. Okay, Daddy, Tyler said, picking up his bear and walking toward the bathroom. Talking Tyler into a bath usually involved such elaborate negotiations Robert felt he should involve the United Nations. <laughs> he couldn't believe tonight's routine was going so easy. It was funny though. As much as Tyler usually argued about bath time, once he was in the water, he loved it. Robert threw Tyler's collection of rubber duckies and toy boats in the water, and the boy was happy to splash and play. Robert set, down, set Freddy down on Tyler's toddler stepped stool, so he was at a safe distance from the splash zone, but Tyler could still see him. Tyler held up each of his tub toys to show to Freddy. Freddy, dis my blue boat. Freddy, dis my yellow ducky. Two-year-olds loved to show off and brag about their material possessions, Robert had noticed. When Tyler talked to his grandma on the phone, most of what he said was a list of the toys he owned. It was like he was some kind of business tycoon, bragging about how many cars and houses he owned. After Tyler was clean and in his choo-choo chain, uh, and in his choo-choo train pajamas, Robert tucked him into bed with Tagalong Freddy. You want me to read you a book, buddy? Robert asked. Two books, Tyler said. Robert pretended to be aghast at such an outrageous request. Two books? Just because I'm two, Tyler said. Like that explained everything. Well, I guess I can't argue with that. Robert scooted a chair next to Tyler's bed and looked over at Tyler's bookshelf. The silly chicken, Tyler said. Robert pulled out the book about the silly chicken. Do the voices, Tyler said. Robert read the book about the silly chicken, complete with silly chicken noises. Tyler giggled because the voice was funny. Ow. <laughs> I just banged my hand against something. Um, the book was funny, but also Robert suspected because it was hilarious to hear your parent making a fool for yourself. Now the piggy one, Tyler said. Robert obeyed. By the end of the piggy story, Tyler's eyes were drooping. Seconds after Robert closed the book, Tyler wrapped his arm around his tag-along Freddy and went right to sleep. Robert couldn't believe how much easier the regular tasks of parenting had become with tag-along Freddy. He couldn't believe he almost didn't buy the bear because it had seemed too expensive. It would have been worth it at twice the price. Robert got a soda and a snack from the fridge and settled in to watch a dumb but fun action movie he'd missed because he never got to go to the theatre anymore. He knew he could hire a sitter, but he already felt bad leaving Tyler in daycare all day. He wanted to spend all the time he could with him. This little boy had already been deprived of a mum. As a dad, Robert already felt he wasn't adequate or enough. The least he could do was try to be present all he could. Just like in school, even if you weren't great at it, you could generally get up if you put some effort and showed up. It wasn't a great par parenting philosophy, but it was one Robert could work with. As the movie's opening credits ran, Robert felt a buzz from his tag-along time wristwatch. The watch's screen read a message from Freddy. He tapped it, and the text said, fast asleep. Nice. Robert let himself relax. The movie was the exact kind of thing Anna would have hated, but Robert enjoyed the brainless entertainment of cars chasing each other and guns blazing. He knew he would have enjoyed the movie more if Anna had been beside him, making snarky comments about the improbability of the situations and the cheesiness of the acting. She had always been very tolerant of him being equally snarky when they watched the romantic comedy she liked, even with his ever-present ever present, ever present loneliness. Sorry, uh, It was still one of the most relaxing nights he'd had in a long time. He knew he had Tagalong Freddy to thank for his easy evening. Tagalong Freddy accompanied Tyler to the breakfast table the next morning and then went with him to daycare. Tyler didn't even ask to play with Robert's phone in the car. He cuddled Freddy and talked to him instead. When they arrived in the classroom, Miss Lauren squatted on the floor to examine Tyler's new toy. Who's your friend? she asked. Freddy, Tyler said, sounding proud. 
and delighted. He held the bear to Miss Lauren's face so it seemed to kiss her cheek. Miss Lauren laughed. <laughs> Freddy's very friendly. I know you usually discourage bringing toys from home, Robert said. But we got the bear yesterday and he absolutely refuses to part with it. Miss Lauren smiled and looked at Tyler, who was cuddling Freddy against his chest. It would be obvious to anyone how happy the toy made him. Well, then I think I can make an exception in this case. Robert knew the teachers at the daycare cut Tyler some slack because he didn't have a mum. Just a sad but well-meaning dad who often seemed incompetent and overwhelmed. While on one hand, he didn't like being looked at with pity. On the other, he was happy to take all the breaks he could get. Every once in a while, as Robert worked in his cubicle, his tag-along Freddy time wristwatch would vibrate. He would tap it and read a text from Freddy. Messy fun with finger paints. Yum. Lunchtime. Nap time. He's snoozing away. There was something comforting about those messages, about the way they let Robert picture what Tyler was doing over the course of his day. It made him feel less isolated, like he was a part of something, a family. He and Tyler may not have been the complete family that Robert had longed for, but they were still a family. Just like Miss Lauren had explained the idea of family to Tyler's class, they were people who loved each other, and that had to count for something. Saturday morning after breakfast, Robert grabbed a second cup of coffee and helped Tyler down from his booster seat. It's a beautiful morning, buddy. Why don't we go outside and you can play in your sandbox? Yeah, sandbox, Tyler said. He grabbed his Freddy doll with one hand and his daddy's hand with the other. Freddy play too. Okay, Robert said. Freddy can come too, but he can't get in the sandbox. The sand would be bad for his fur. Robert had settled into some kind of deal with the helpful inanimate object that was tag along Freddy. Freddy would give Robert regular updates on Tyler's safety and well-being and in return Robert would prevent Tyler from submerging Freddy in water, smearing him with spaghetti sauce, coating him in sand or exposing him to any other messy form of peril. It was a mutually beneficial relationship. Outside, Tyler perched Tagalong Freddy on the side of the sandbox. Robert supposed it was so that Freddy could watch him play. Robert settled on a chair on the porch with, a, with his cup of coffee and watched Tyler play too. Tyler loved his sandbox. It was filled with toy dump trucks and bulldozers and other construction vehicles. Tyler loved taking his plastic shovel, filling his dump truck with sand, moving it around while making vroom sounds, and then dumping out the sand only to fill it up again. It never got old as far as Robert could tell. From inside the house, Robert heard his phone ringing. He had meant to bring it outside, but had left it on the kitchen counter. Parenting made him so scattered that it seemed he was always leaving something behind. Hey buddy, I'm gonna go get the phone, Robert said. You stay in the sandbox, okay? Okay, daddy, Tyler said, shoveling sand into the, into the bed of his dump truck. I'll be right back, Robert called. Robert ran into the kitchen and picked up his phone. The voicemail icon popped up and he clicked on it. It was a recorded message from a sketchy sounded company trying to sell him a homeowner's insurance he didn't need. He deleted the message and headed back outside. The sandbox was empty. <laughs> Fear gripped Robert's heart. Tyler, he yelled. Tyler? No answer. He ran up to the sandbox. He could see the indentation in the sand where Tyler had been sitting, but no Tyler. Tyler's tagalong Freddy still sat on the edge of the sandbox. Clearly Freddy had not been watching. Robert looked at the open gate. It had been closed before, hadn't it? And saw a white van he didn't recognise driving away. Could Tyler be inside that van? It was the absolute worst thing he could imagine. Robert felt his tag-along Freddy time watch, uh, wristwatch vibrate. The watch's screen announced a message from Freddy. He tapped the icon. A one-word message appeared on the screen. Gone. Oh no. Gone? Robert screamed. Gone? How is that supposed to help me? He kicked the stuffed bear as hard as he could, sending it sailing across the yard. Tyler! Tyler! He yelled some more. He ran out into the street, yelling. Neighbours came out of their houses to ask what was wrong, but no one had seen his son. Could someone have opened the gate, come into the yard and snatched his son in the few seconds it took him to go inside the house and grab his phone? It seemed impossible, and yet you saw that sort of thing on the news all the time. Those people had, had probably thought it was impossible too, the kind of thing that happened to other people but not to you, until it did. His phone. He had forgotten he was still holding his phone. Time was wasting. He called the police. They arrived quickly. He'd given them that. 
There were two officers, an older man with salt and pepper hair and a young, dark-haired woman. So, at what time did you notice your son was missing? The younger officer asked. Her demeanour was professional, but Robert could still hear genuine concern in her voice. Her badge read M Ramirez. Maybe 20 minutes ago, Robert said. He was so panicky he couldn't get his breath. He was in the sandbox, I ran into the house to get my phone, and when I came back, he was gone. And there's no chance he could have come into the house while you were getting your phone and then hidden somewhere. Some kids get a kick out of hiding. The older officer, whose badge read Cook, said, You'd be amazed how many kids I found hiding under beds or in closets, giggling like how crazy they've uh, about uh, giggling like crazy about how bad they've scared their mum and dad. No, I would have heard him if he came back in the house. Robert said. Also, the front gate was open when I came back. I'm pretty sure it was closed before, and I saw a white van on the street. I know it doesn't belong to anybody in the neighbourhood. Maybe he was abducted by someone in that van. Officer Ramirez was taking notes furiously. Did you get the van's license plate number? No, it drove away too fast. I'm sorry. In fact, Robert hadn't even thought of trying to get the van's license plate number. You would think I'd never seen a cop show on TV, he thought. I'm incompetent. I'm too incompetent to be a parent. And now Tyler is pay paying the price. That's okay, Officer Ramirez said. I know this is upsetting. I just need to go through all of these questions so that we'll have the information we need to find your son. Now... Does your son's mother live with you? No, she died in childbirth having Tyler. If she weren't dead, Roberts thought, Tyler probably wouldn't be missing because he at least would have had one competent parent. I'm sorry to hear that, Officer Ramirez said. Could you give us a physical description of your son? He's two years old, Robert said. Hazel eyes, dark hair. He's about two, sorry, he's about three feet tall. And I think he weighed 28 pounds on his last doctor's visit. Conjuring up a vivid picture of Tyler made his disappearance all the more painful. Three feet tall and 28 pounds. He was so tiny, so helpless. Here, I can send you a picture of him. He fumbled with his phone. Can you tell us what clothing Tyler was wearing at the time of his disappearance? Officer Ramirez continued. What clothes had Robert picked out for Tyler this morning? He hadn't paid much attention because he wasn't anticipating being quizzed on them. Play clothes. Blue shorts, I think, and a t-shirt with Freddy Fazbear on it, saying the bear's name made him think painfully of the message on his wristwatch. <sighs> Gone. He had to pull himself together, for Tyler's sake. Red sneakers, he said, and he's still in diapers if that matters. Tears sprang to his eyes. Tyler was still just a baby. Thank you, Officer Ramirez said. So, what are you going to do to find him? Robert asked. Officer Cook who had seemed content to let his partner ask most of the questions, finally chimed in. Sir, when a child is this young and missing, you can be sure it's something we take lightly. We'll scour the entire area, we'll see if we can get any info about that van, and we'll be in touch. Right now, home is the best place for you to be, with your phone close by. Are you going to put out one of those alerts for missing children? Robert asked. He couldn't remember what the alerts were called, but he got them on his phone with some frequency and always found them upsetting. He couldn't help imagining the frightened children, uh, the frantic parents. Now, he was one of those parents. An Amber Alert? The older officer said. We will if we don't find him quickly and we feel like he's in, a, in any immediate danger. Of course he's in danger, Robert shouted. He's two years old and he's either run off by himself or has been abducted by a maniac. How can he not be in danger? We understand you're upset, Officer Ramirez said, patting his arm. This is every parent's worst nightmare, but we're going to do everything in our power to get Tyler back to you as quickly as possible, safe and sound. It was 5pm and there were still no leads. The, uh, the police had assured him that they were asking around about the suspicious white van, but hadn't received any useful information yet. Robert sat on the couch staring ahead in daze. He had never felt so useless, so worthless. He only had one job that mattered, and that was to keep his son safe. He had failed miserably. Everyone he loved died or disappeared. He couldn't protect anyone, and now he was alone. It probably served him right. Robert's watch vibrated. He felt a sudden, small flutter of hope. Maybe the watch had some information about Tyler's whereabouts. He tapped a message from Freddy. A text appeared. Why don't you go to the cliffs? Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, that line. Oh, got shivers. You know what that means, right? 
He's basically telling him to commit suicide. God. Uh, Robert shivered as though the temperature in the room had dropped by 40 degrees. Jumper's cliff. His own thoughts had been headed in what dire- in that direction. Without Anna, without Tyler, what reason did he have to keep on living? Apparently, he was so worthless that even a child's toy thought he was a waste of good organs. Stop, Robert thought. Tyler hadn't been... Uh, Tyler hadn't even been missing for eight full hours. If he was still alive, Robert had to be there for him. He wasn't much, but he was all Tyler had. He would try to do better, try not to fail his son the next time. He looked over at the mantel where he had set the tag along Freddy when, when he brought it back into the house. He knew it was ridiculous, but he felt like the bear was mocking him, judging him. Robert wasn't a superstitious person, but he couldn't shake the feeling that the toy was somehow bad luck. He grabbed it, holding it between his thumb and forefinger as if it was a dead rat. He carried it outside, lifted the lid on the garbage can, and dumped it inside. Back in the house, Robert sat back down on the couch. Normally, at this time, he'd be thinking about what he and Tyler could have done for supper. Usually on Saturdays, he made something simple, hot dogs or grilled cheese sandwiches. Sometimes he'd order pizza and they'd watch one of the movies Tyler loved, the kind with cartoon animals being heroic. Robert wished he could be heroic. His phone rang. He answered before it and he answered before it had time to ring twice, sorry. Mr. Stanton, this is Detective Ramirez. Did you find him? Robert's heart was pounding in his chest. Not yet, sir, but we have some officers out all over the city. We also have use of a dog that has tremendous track record when it comes to locating missing persons. I know this seems like an irregular request, but do you have some piece of clothing that belongs to your son that we could give to the dog to sniff? An unwashed shirt of his that's in the laundry hamper, maybe? I'm sure I do, yes. Robert was always behind on laundry. He counted it as one of his many failings, but in this case, maybe it could actually be helpful. Well, if it's okay with you, I may come by and get it. Yes, of course, Robert said, trying to keep his voice from breaking, <laughs> like me. Uh, anything that might help you find him. Once he was off the phone, Robert went into Tyler's room. He looked at Tyler's little toddler bre- bed and thought about all the nights he had peeked into the room and seen Tyler there, sleeping in that deep, peaceful way that only small children can sleep. He would give anything to see Ch- Tyler lying there right now. Anything. He reached into the laundry hamper and pulled out the blue and white striped shirt Tyler had worn just the day before. When he held it up, it seemed impossibly small, like doll clothes. He held the shirt close to his nose and inhaled. Playground dirt, apple juice, a sweet, hay-like aroma he thought of as little boy smell. His little boy's smell. Robert sat down on Tyler's bed, put his face in his hands and sobbed. By the time Detective Ramirez arrived to pick up the shirt, Robert had calmed down a little, but his eyes were still red and swollen. Swollen? Oh my gosh, swollen. (laughs) I know this is hard, Detective Ramirez said. Probably the hardest thing you've ever been through, but I promise you, we will do all that we can to find your little boy. Try to get some rest, okay? (laughs) After the officer left, Robert sank back into the living room couch. This was probably the hardest thing he had ever been through, but losing Anna had been terribly hard too. He knew everybody had some bad things happen to them, but he certainly felt like he had it more than his fair share of suffering. His phone vibrated. He clicked on the message icon. The text read, Why don't you go to the cliffs? Robert's anger flashed white hot. Maybe it wasn't so crazy to think the bear was judging him. After all, it was urging him to commit suicide. Well, he wasn't going to have it. He stomped outside to the garbage can where he had dumped the thing. He brought the bear back into the house.